I want everything she says I'll give it back to you when the moon comes up When the wolves are dancing around the evergreen Hi, my name is Ben Lawrenson and this is my introduction to the world via I Move, I Live online music magazine. Well, as you can tell uh, by my strange accent, I'm not from the United States. Um, I do have a strange accent because I live in New Jersey and the second biggest reason being that I am from uh, the strange faraway land called Norway, which is not the capital of Sweden, by the way. Um, I've uh, been doing music since I was a little boy. I had a small career in Norway with a band called Brent. We released two albums and one EP. We had a couple of hit 40 records. Uh, besides that, I've been a songwriter. Uh, I wrote songs for other artists, such as uh, Paul Flota, he's like the Johnny Cash of Norway, and also a, a wonderful artist here in America, up-and-coming bachata artist called Leslie Grace, and a few other things. I'm uh, here in America since 2009, I've been working in different bands, uh, connected with different things but uh, now I'm focusing on my solo career I just released an album called America and I'm here to tell you a little bit about that one I had other options I've uh, you know Norway is such a small country is such a small market so it's very hard to sustain life uh, only doing music. So I was a, a social worker actually for about 12 years prior to coming here and um, I, I was very involved in that work. Uh, it was a very rewarding type of work. I worked with uh, juvenile delinquents uh, in the age group of 14 to 19 and uh, I felt that um, you know, I was learning a lot about myself working with these kids, but I realized something. I realized the the uh, deep, important uh, need we human beings have to communicate. And I think, although I could have pursued a career like that, when I was given a chance to come to America, and I realized I could communicate with a much larger group of people uh, using a uh, 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 a tool like music which is an, an incredible fast uh, tool in order to to get to a level where you can start communing with communicating with people on a completely different level than almost any other type of work that I could think of so I think that is my number one reason for choosing music over anything else boy uh, I've had so many ups and downs, um, but I would pick um, uh, two of them. I think the, the biggest downer, so to speak, that I've ever experienced was uh, while I was working as a musician, I, I had a day job, but I wasn't hired uh, as a full-time employee, so the, the company I was working for was downsized and they had to fire me. So I was fired, and at the same time, I was hired to write some songs for a guy. And uh, I was hoping that the record label would be able to pay me a little bit. Uh, it turned out that they were not able to pay me anything up front for that work. And so I was laid off, I didn't receive any money for the work I was doing. And I, um, I ended up losing my flat, I had no money, I had to live with my sister. I was drinking heavily. Uh, it was a <clears throat> really a low point where I felt I was like this far away from being a homeless person. And I felt that I had invested everything into my career. Um, oh yeah, my, um, and by the way, my marriage had failed. So I was without my two boys and 
uh, had very little contact with them because they had moved to a different country. So life was really shitty at that point. And this is about, I would say, 12 years ago, 13 years ago. So that was the, uh, the ultimate low. Um, I remember sitting in the bathroom writing a song called Life Down Here in Hell. <laughs> that's, that's what it felt like. And, uh, you know, drinking and crying and writing. <laughs> it was pretty pathetic. But uh, that's the honest truth, uh, that, that's, that was my low point. My high point came a few years later when through this wonderful tool of music I was able to meet a person, uh, a friend of mine knew of uh, his friend who, who wanted to start an, uh, a music ministry. He slipped one of my songs on her desk, she had a piles of demos in front of her and she wanted to pick some some interesting artists and songwriters for her for her uh, music ministry and in that pile was a song called Naked, Homeless and Hungry and maybe it was the title uh, that uh, made her pick my demo, I don't know, but it turns out that uh, she wanted me to come from Norway to New York to join her ministry, I did so and uh, a few years later we got connected on an emotional level and now she's my wife and we have a uh, three-year-old son together and uh, life has never been better so that is my uh, that's my biggest up well it's not that it's more downs it's uh, life the cliche, right? I mean, life is like an elevator, it goes up and down all the time and you're always somewhere in between, either on your way up and or and once you, you're on the up, you, you very soon find that, well, you, you had hit your head against the wall and something will start bringing you down. I mean, it goes like this all the time. But I think the reason why, uh, although I'm a little, I'm not 19 anymore I'm, and I'm still, but I still feel like I'm just starting out on this journey and uh, I still want to continue working uh, with something related to, to music and to, to being creative. And I think the reason for that is what I mentioned earlier. There's just nothing else I know of that will put you in a place where you start communicating with people. I mean, um, I drive into town, I know nobody. I'm invited to play somewhere, perhaps a house concert or some festival or something. And I drive in and you hang out and you might greet some people and you say hi and bye and whatnot and but the minute I enter the stage and I see I start connecting with people and I come off stage then it's like day and night something has changed something has uh, had an impact some kind of a door was opened between me and these people and now we're communicating people telling me their life stories and they're sharing their some other inmost feelings and it's just a wonderful wonderful place to be at where people start opening up like that because of this tool you know this this tool that it, that music is it's um you know i'm not going to try to philosophize too much over the, the meaning of music and the impact it has because i think it has a lot of different meanings and impacts on all our our lives but i think the fascinating thing is that this this kind of sp spiritual thing that flows from one person to another through through waves of sound um I think there's there's something going on there that we just immediately connect with. Maybe because every, there's sound in everything. Everything our body is just full of sound, and so we all resonate with different kind of frequencies and at all times. And music is like like a compressed pile of of, of sound of life. Um, and um, you know, as you send it out into the universe, and, and there will be people out there who can resonate with that, and they will connect with you now. So that's just something magical. There's something magical going on there. So that's why. Well, I, co I, I coined my own phrase. I call my music acoustic pop noir and uh, it's kind of acoustic-y, uh, it's definitely in the category of popular, traditional popular music and then I tied that little noir uh, thing both because I like the word noir which means of course dark but 
it's not dark music per se. It's kind of it's kind of serious music. It's what I would call night music or winter music. It's music for relaxing. It's music for kicking back, for being, um, for I wouldn't say meditation, but uh, meditative. You know, it's 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 um, music that that hopefully puts you in a place where you start to meditate and, and think about things and think about life. Uh, there's uh, Every song has its own little message. I, 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 it's not topical, but it's, it's you know, music with a message. Um, so if you're into any of what I just said, I think you will find layers of stuff that, that would interest you on my record. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's red wine music. I write most of my music. On my album I have a couple of covers um, and I've used some traditional American folk music and I put my own lyrics to some some beautiful uh, music that I've found. Uh, but mostly, yeah, I write myself. I'm not really that interested in the process of writing itself. I mean, writing to me comes very quickly. I, I write the song very fast. And I think over the years, I'm really trying not to be too clever about it. I, I, I try not to get in the way of the song, of the pure idea. I don't want to sit there and think, you know, maybe if I toss in some nine chords or eleven chords and, you know, try to be clever about it, I feel like I'm kind of um, mushing up the, the, the purity of the idea. It, it gets, gets cloudy and sketchy so I, I try to stay away from that I try to once I have an idea and it usually comes to me like an idea a topic something I want to say and if, if that's clear to me I get the lyrics down very quickly and and the music sort of almost comes by itself it's very kind of it's very effortless the minute I feel like I'm struggling or it start to becoming effort and, and I'm st I start to become too intellectual or too clever about it I usually put it aside and pick it up at some later date so that's usually the process well uh, when I meet people I think I sense that people have a certain perception of me as uh, uh, as being something I mean they they usually ask, they usually ask me like are you a guitar player or are you a musician or, or so I don't know I don't know exactly what it is about me that sends off those kind of visual cues but but once I get um, start start talking to people it seems to be a surprise to them that I'm interested in topics like social theories or that I've been a social worker and uh, I, I, I guess the tendency is to think that singers in particular, but also musicians, are very kind of into themselves and into their own lives. And you know, you kind of need to be in order to be a creative person and use yourself as the palette, so to speak, and you know, create something from yourself, a, a, some kind of a product that you present to people. You kind of have to be centered on yourself on who you are how you feel and all of that uh, but then uh, to realize that most I, I don't think most musicians are like that I mean you have to be a little bit like that but if you're a true artist you're you're using kind of some of the gift you've been given to see go into the world and and, and talk about what you experience interacting with the world and so I find that a lot of musicians actually are into for instance social work or that type of maybe teaching and that type of interaction is something they're, they're looking for. And, uh, but uh, I kind of dive deep into that with um, being very interested in social theory. And I have a little bit of education inside of that so I, that I used as a social worker. So I don't know if that's really a surprise to anybody, but that seems to be a little bit of a surprise when I start talking to people. So that was the first I could think of. Well, the album is called America um, for many different reasons um, like I mentioned earlier you know my wife she was running a ministry and when we decided to be together the the congregation wouldn't have that so they they fired 
us both actually and it created sort of a social uh, storm like a whirlwind where we both felt we we were cast out and put aside and it was a chaotic experience and but we we wanted to be together and we wouldn't let anybody else you know decide what kind of life we should be living and our own search for our our, our happiness and our, our who, who we should be with and who we should love so we pursue that and we're still together thankfully and and the album talks about the process of moving from A to B. I mean, physically, I moved from one country to another, and a lot of Europeans moved from Europe to America, so there's a process there that's kind of uh, well known to a lot of people. A lot of people have that experience. But I think also socially, you know, deciding to be with someone and then kind of go against the social uh, uh, currents, if you like, uh, uh, go against the, the currents. Um, go against the current. That was a very interesting experience and you feel like your immediate world is kind of falling apart or something is or is obstructing you from doing maybe what you want to do and, and uh, you kind of in that position you have to decide what's important for you and you, uh, you have to decide whether you want to stay with it and, or not and, and that, I think that's, that's something that every human being has to do in their life. So, so America, it's, it's like, it's not really the country America, but it's something that you decide that you want to go for. Some, some kind of maybe utopia or some kind of a, a dream that you have. And you leave your familiar uh, shores and set out into the unknown, so to speak. Yeah. I think Leonard Cohen said it very well. He said, every human being is at the forefront of their own lives. And I think that's very, very true. And I realized with that experience how true that is for me. And I realized where my forefront was. And uh, um, so, uh, although these songs were written over a number of years, they collectively kind of sum up that whole search for, for something, leaving something familiar behind and, and going into the unknown and, and, and search for that so that's what the album is about um, musically like I said it's kind of folky I put up a couple of mics in my living room I play all most of the instruments myself apart from some uh, apart from some string work that I had a quartet come in and do but I play uh, guitars and banjos and mandolins and bass and piano and some synthesizers and I, I sing and, um, so it's kind of a um, acoustic-y, mellow sort of an album and uh, uh, where I think the storytelling is more in, in the focus and not so much the instrumentation and the arrangements. Um, so I, I think I achieved that and the feedback's been great. Um, I have people saying they can't stop listening to it and I think what they're, they're feeling, they're, they're feeling the stories and they're feeling um, the, the, the themes and the topics. So yeah, I, I think I achieved the goal I set out to do. So. Okay. Here comes the knock at the door, the landlord. He just wants 